representatives from 48 African countries participating in the opening ceremony. The summit is the first top-level multilateral meeting between South Korea and African nations and is being held under the theme, The Future We Make Together. The opening session was followed by discussions and a lunch, and the ceremony wrapped up with remarks made by both the co-chairs. Now, considering the fact that this is South Korea's first ever summit with African nations, the summit has been getting a lot of attention, and we can see reporters from all over the world here to cover the summit. We have just concluded the Korea-Africa Summit 2024. The summit was attended by the heads of states and governments from 48 countries, along with representatives from four international organizations. It is particularly significant that this was the first Korea-Africa summit to be hosted by Korea in the presence of 33 heads of states and the chairperson of the African Union Commission. It was indeed an honor to have co-chair this historic summit with His Excellence Mohammed Old Sheikh Al Ghazni, the President of Mauritania. Despite the geographical distance between Korea and Africa, we have been cooperating in various fields as partners with shared aspirations for development. And today, we open a new chapter in the Korea-Africa relations for a shared future we shall create together. First, Korea and African nations agree to further expand reciprocal trade and investment cooperation to achieve shared growth by signing the Economic Partnership Agreement and the Trade Investment Promotion Framework. To this end, in line with the realization of the African continental free trade area, we have agreed to further strengthen the institutional framework for expanding trade and investment. Furthermore, Korea has agreed to develop an even more efficient system of concessional loans and grants according to the actual needs of African nations. To this end, Korea will expand its ODA to $10 billion by 2030. To facilitate the entrance of Korean companies into the African market, approximately $14 billion in export financing will be provided to relevant companies, enabling outstanding companies from Korea to expand their presence in Africa and contribute to the expansion of sustainable infrastructure. Korea will also support the adoption of e-government and promote the knowledge sharing program for economic development to boost digital-based trade in Africa. The heads of states and governments identified investing in education to be crucial in realizing the growth potential of Africa, where 60 percent of the population is age 25 or under. Korea through its Tech for Africa initiative, has agreed to vitalize digital capacity building programs. Second, the participating leaders have agreed to jointly address global challenges and promote sustainable development. The heads of states and the participating leaders have also agreed to work together to address the global threat of climate change by establishing a climate finance structure that reflects Africa's climate response needs. 
In addition, Korea will continue to provide support for Africa's food security challenges and expand its food self-sufficiency capacity building programs such as the K-Belt Rice Belt Initiative. Korea and Africa will launch the Critical Minerals Dialogue this year to help stabilize supply chains and contribute to the sustainable development of mineral resources around the world. It will serve as a model case. Third, we have reaffirmed the need for solidarity in achieving international peace and security. African heads of state and participating leaders recognized Korea's contribution to peace and security in Africa through UN PKO activities and AU peace and security operations. Security operations. While serving as a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council in the term of 2024 to 2025, Korea shall further strengthen cooperation with Africa on the international stage. Meanwhile, the attending leaders emphasize the importance of reaffirming the principle that all members of the international community must faithfully implement Security Council resolutions in order to achieve the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. The joint declaration of the Korea-Africa Summit was adopted with the closing of the summit. The joint declaration is expected to serve as a compass for cooperation towards the future that Korea and Africa shall make together. In order to monitor implementation of the cooperation projects discussed today and included in the joint declaration, sectoral high-level cooperation bodies such as Korea-Africa Economic Cooperation Council and the Agriculture Ministers' Meeting shall be leveraged. In 2026, Korea-Africa Foreign Minister's Meeting will be held to review the outcomes of the summit and discuss the hosting of the next summit. Since my first year in office, I have emphasized the importance of cooperation with Africa under the Global Pivotal State Vision. I am pleased to have been able to fulfill that promise with the successful outcomes of this inaugural Korea-Africa Summit. The fact that so many African heads of states and delegates have been gracious enough to travel so far to join us here in Korea is a testament to the expectations and trust in our partnership. I look forward to a successful conclusion of this summit by achieving great outcomes through the Korea-Africa Business Summit and numerous other side events to be held tomorrow. Thank you. Next, we will be inviting His Excellency, the President of Mauritania, for his remarks. Greetings. I am very honored and pleased to be co-chairing the first Korea-Africa Summit together with my good friend, President Yoon sung yeol of the Republic of Korea. I would like to express my gratitude to the Korean government and the Korean people for their warm hospitality that has been expect, extended to all the delegations upon our arrival in this beautiful country, the land of the morning glory. Thank you once again. Je félicite. 
Monsieur I would like to also mention that this summit has been organized in a perfect manner. It has been impeccable. We have been discussing the topics of shared growth, sustainability, and solidarity, and these are the main principles and par part of, of our common vision, and this is a way forward for every individual in our countries to benefit from. We listened to the statements and interventions by the participating heads of states and governments from Korea and Africa, and in doing so, we were able to build a consensus and establish a common understanding that we will work together to achieve the African Union Agenda 2063. We also dealt with a wide range of topics, including ways to promote trade with Korea and innovation and technology exchanges in a sustainable manner. We all understand that Korea can offer a lot, especially when it comes to their experience of economic development, human capital development, industrialization, and transition to a digital economy. In these areas, we have a lot to learn from Korea. We affirm and understand the growth potential of Africa. Africa has a young population, there is much dynamism, and Africa has abundant critical natural resources. Against this backdrop, we are very pleased that the Korean government will increase the ODA to more than double to about $10 billion by 2030 and increase the export finance to $14 billion U.S. dollars. And Korea has made commitments to provide support in terms of infrastructure human capital development and technology transfer. So, in conclusion, allow me to say that the Korea-Africa Summit meeting was an opportunity to renew our commitment to shared growth and partnership based on mutual respect and trust. We look forward to more progress. Thank you. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of